Okay, this is a video where we're going to cover the initial installation and configuration of the WP Members plugin. We'll be talking about the default settings the plugin installs and then just a couple of initial setup items that you may want to cover. And we'll go into more detail in other videos on some of the other settings. This will just get you up and running quickly. You'll notice here that I have a basic site set up and we have some posts and we have a sidebar. We've got our menu. If I click through to read the post, content shows and we have comments down here at the bottom. So let's go back to the home page. So with that, let's go ahead and install and set up the plugin. You'll notice I already have it installed but not activated. The plugin, when you activate it, if it is a clean install, meaning there's no database settings uh, from the plugin being previously installed, it will install its default settings. If it's already been installed and you're just upgrading or you had a previous installation, you deactivate it, you're reactivating it, it skips the default settings and leaves the settings in place that are already there. Uh, so this is going to be a clean install with the default settings. So I'll click activate and now the plugins activated so we can go to the settings and get set up. So let's just talk quickly about the initial settings right here under the content option in the options tab. Initially the plugin installs the block posts but not pages. It's not set to show excerpts. It is set to show a login form and a registration form and it's not set to do an auto excerpt. So we'll talk about what these are, what these mean, and what they do. Let's go back to our site now with the initial install. We haven't done anything other than the default settings. So here's our home page with our posts and we click through to read this post and you'll notice now instead of getting the content like we did before the plugin was installed we're asked to log in or if we're a new user we can register and the contents are now or the comments are now hidden so that's the basic default settings so here we have a post that has its full content so one thing that's important to point out how the plugin operates is on archive templates which those are anything like a category, search results, um, your home page where you have multiple posts, things like that. The plugin doesn't block that content. Okay, it's up to you to set an excerpt. And what the plugin op the premise the plugin operates under is this is teaser content, and we're leading a user then to log in or register. So it's designed to be a conversion tool. So how do you set this up? Okay. This continue reading is created with what's called a read more tag. So this unordered list post that shows the full content on our page, we need to set a read more tag for that. So if we go to posts and we go to our ordered list post, click edit. And let's say we want to just put that We'll right here this first couple sentences. This button right here. Insert read more tag. And we'll update it. So now the read more tag is in there. So if we go back and we refresh our page, you'll see now we have an excerpt and we can continue through and the remainder of the content is blocked. Okay, so that's the read more tag. Now, if you're installing this on a site that has a few hundred posts and you don't have read more tag on there, that could be problematic. So the plugin has another little feature. That's this auto excerpt. So we don't have to use the read more tag. So if we enable this, let's say we want to make that our automatic excerpt just be the first 50 words of a post save our settings. 
So now let's go back to our site and go back to the home page and we'll scroll down. This post here, quotes time, did not have a read more tag in it. It's auto excerpt. Now, one thing to point out is that if there is a read more tag, that takes priority. So you can use both the auto excerpt and the read more tag if you have certain posts where you have specific excerpts you want to use, you can use the read more tag. The auto excerpt, when it's looking at the content, if there's no read more tag, it will set the auto excerpt at the number of words we've defined in the setting. If there is a read more tag, it will default to that. It's assuming that you place that there on purpose and that you want the excerpt to be where the read more tag is. There is also a filter so you can customize this on a post by post basis, um, but that's a more advanced thing and we're we'll, we're not going to get into that in this video. So the point is, auto excerpt does it automatically, read more tag does it manually. Auto excerpt can be used to get you up and running quickly if you want to go through and do your own excerpts later. Or if you're like me, sometimes I like to just have the auto excerpt on so that it's, it's done for me. And then if there is a piece of content where I have a specific excerpt I want to use, then I use the read more tag. So now let's talk about this next setting here, show excerpts. We've been talking about excerpts, so it might seem counterintuitive um, that show excerpts is not enabled, but we're seeing an excerpt. So let me specifically point out that this setting for show excerpts is specifically talking about when we click through uh, where we saw the blocked content and we saw the login form. Um, that's where it's talking about. So when we click through, see it says it just gives us the title and it says this content's restricted to site members. So if we enable that, now we click through and our same excerpt shows and then it shows the login form and registration form. Okay, so that's what that does. The show login form and show registration form are also speaking of the specific location when you click through to a blocked page or a blocked post and it shows that login form and a registration form. So let's suppose you want to turn off the registration form. So now if we refresh this page, now we just have the login form. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. So, we're blocking posts by default, we're not blocking pages. Let's say we have a post, let's say this post is for users only, let's say this ordered list post is not, that we want that to be freely available, the user doesn't have to be logged in. So right now it falls under the default. So we want to change that. So let's go to all posts, and there's two ways to do this. First, let me point out this column here where it says unblocked. The plugin adds this last column and it will always show what the opposite of the default setting is so you can quickly see anything that is um, opposite the default. So if we have uh, posts are blocked by default, in this case, this is going to tell us any posts that are not blocked. So ordered list post is blocked. If we click through to edit the post, we have a little box up here that says post restriction. It tells us the default setting and gives us the option to toggle that to the opposite of the default setting. So posts are blocked. We want to unblock this post. And now if we go back to our site and we click through, we're not logged in, we can see the post. Yet the other posts are still blocked. And there's one other way to do this. Let me turn this back to blocked. And we'll go back to the all posts. You can do this in bulk. So if you have 10 pages that you need to set, let's say we want to set ordered list post and simple text post, both to unblocked, we can do that in the bulk menu. Click apply. 
and now you see both of these are marked as unblocked. So hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Let's go back to our settings and talk about a couple of other things. Um, first, you'll notice over here in the sidebar we've just got recent posts, pages, and categories. What if we want to have a login form on our sidebar? We can do that with the plugins widget. So if we go to appearance, widgets, this widget WP members login, we'll drop that right up here. We'll save it. Go to our site. And you'll see now we have a login form here on the sidebar. Now, let me talk about uh, one thing. Some people always ask this question. There's no links here. It's just the form. What if I want a link to reset a forgotten password or to register? I'm going to show you how to do that. If we go back to our plugin settings, main options tab, we scroll down to this section. Here we have login page, register page, and user profile page. Let me point out that these are optional, and in the plugin's basic setting setup, all these do is create some links for you. Um, there are advanced uses of these, but we're not going to get into that in this initial video. So the plugin does not create these pages for you. Personally, I don't like it when plugins create a bunch of pages and make assumptions on how I want things installed. So this plugin leaves it up to you to do it the way you want it to be done, and then you just tell the plugin where those pages are. So first, let's create those pages. We're going to create three pages, a login, a registration, and a user profile page. The user profile page is going to be used for resetting a forgotten password, updating our registration information, and changing a password. So first, let's create a login page. So we'll put our cursor down here in the main content. This can be done with the plugin's short codes, and the plugin installs this handy little drop-down menu that has access to all of the plugin's short codes. We're only going to talk about three basic ones. The first one is basic login, so we'll drop that in there and make our login page. Now we'll make a registration page. And lastly, our user profile page. I'm going to call this Update My Settings. And it's under Other Forms, User Profile Page. This is a catch-all. I just want to point out some people like to go in and use some of these other forms like the Password Reset, Password Change, Update User Edit, or user data edit. These are all components contained within this one single shortcode user profile. These really are for if you have a specific, if you're integrating with other plugins or uh, you have some real specific needs on I need this to go in this section or I want to call it in a modal or all kinds of other things. These are for really customizing and fine-tuning. For most people this user profile shortcode is going to be the one that you use. And I recommend you just start with the basic setup, get it going, and move on from there after you understand how all these things work. If you use this one, it'll be easier to get you started. So user profile is our user profile page. So we're going to go back to the settings, and we're going to tell the plugin where these three pages are. So these drop-downs have a list of all the pages in your site. So we'll go ahead and identify the login page, the registration page, and the user profile page that we just made. And let's go back to our site. And now you see we have a nice little link for forgot password and for a new user to register. And then if we go to the main body login form, we have those same links. 
So this forgot password goes to the user profile and it in engages the forgot password. See if we go to um, update my settings. This is the page and notice we've turned off, remember we turned off the registration form uh, for blocked content. So when the user's not logged in, he's going to be met with this login form. But if I go to forgot password, this is the same page, same short code. It's just getting a query link that says, hey, I want the forgot password. The forgot password dialog by default also has a place where the user can retrieve a forgotten username if they forget it. And then also this link now for registration form goes to our registration page that we created with the short code and that'll just show the registration form. And that's the basic setup and configuration. In some of the next videos we'll talk about some further customizing um, of setting up the registration forms and fields and we'll also get into talking about emails and some of the other possible settings you can use with the plugin.